Hello, I'm Jenny Stevens, the Office of Vocation Coordinator, and I work out of the General Counsel Office in Toronto. Hi, I'm Norm Seeley, the Chair of the Board of Vocation, and I serve at Jubilee United Church. The Office of Vocation provides a comprehensive and integrated approach. Designing something new has allowed us to take the best from the past, for example, from the Effective Leadership Healthy Pastoral Relationship projects, and rebuild for the future. As we begin this work, we are prioritizing developing respectful, life-giving relationships with the Indigenous Church, with our Francophonie siblings, with those who are coming into ministry in the United Church of Canada from other countries, with those whose voices we are now hearing and who are coming to the table as never before. We are in need of a comprehensive and integrated approach to ministry. The Office of Vocation will maintain the registry of accredited ministry personnel. Ministry personnel will be accountable for their standing to the Office of Vocation. Regional councils will maintain the membership role. Ordered ministers and lay people are members of the regional councils. Regional councils will know who their ministry personnel are through the shared database with the Office of Vocation, and they will have responsibility for their lay members. The only way to move off the registry of accredited ministry personnel is to request the discontinued service list voluntary or be placed on the discontinued service list disciplinary. Designated lay ministers will have the option of requesting of the Office of Vocation that they remain on the registry of accredited ministry personnel between appointments. It will be up to regional councils if they retain them on their membership role. Ministry personnel will be members of the Regional Council where they serve, or if not serving, where they live. Ministry personnel may request being a member of a different Regional Council. I and my colleagues on the Board of Vocation were elected by the General Council Executive because they've been given that authority by the General Council itself. The Board of Vocation provides the governance of the Office of Vocation. The candidacy boards and other committees of the Office of Vocation have been populated through the nominations process. The Provisional Indigenous Candidacy Board is appointed by the National Indigenous Council. The candidacy boards are commissions of the Board of Vocation and have the authority to make decisions. From the pool of people the conferences had nominated, individuals were named to the Standards for Accreditation Committee, the Credentialing Committee, the Response Committee, and the Remedial Committee. The Standards for Accreditation Committee will work on behalf of the Board of Vocation to develop the standards for continuing education requested by the 42nd General Council will ensure consistency in the mandatory training that's offered, maintain the educational work of the various sexual misconduct prevention and response committees from across the church through partnership with them, and implement the new mandatory trainings approved by the 43rd General Council. The credentialing committee within the Office of Vocation has the authority to designate intentional interim ministers, recognize educational supervisors for the whole church, authorize chaplains as necessary, and until the new admission process is implemented, interview those interested in serving the United Church from other denominations. The Response Committee and the Remedial Committee have been established to work with ministry personnel when concerns are raised about individual ministers. Concerns will come to the Office of Vocation through the coordinator, that's me. If it is clear that the concerns fall under the sexual misconduct prevention and response policy and procedures, then those steps will be put into action immediately. Other concerns will be considered by the Response Committee, who may determine that intervention is best by the Community of Faith or Regional Council, or may determine to work through one of the various processes we currently have. There are resource people, like consultants, investigators, and reviewers available. Investigator reports when a complaint is made about a ministry personnel along with reviewer reports, will go to the Remedial Committee. The Remedial Committee will determine whether they have sufficient information from the findings presented to them. They will also determine what the remediation is if the concern is upheld. Where there is egregious behavior or a failure to comply with the directed program or unsuccessful completion, then the Remedial Committee may request a formal hearing and that is where the Board of Vocation comes in. The Board of Vocation holds formal hearings and appeals of the decisions of the Remedial Committee or the Credentialing Committee, and our decisions are appealable to the Judicial Committee. 
a decision of the credentialing committee to remove the designation of an intentional interim minister is appealable. A three-person group of the Board of Vocation could hear that appeal. I will chair appeals and formal hearings unless it is impossible for some reason, like a perception of bias. This is important work to do well, to treat ministry personnel fairly and consistently, and also understand individual circumstances. The Office of Vocation members have a passion for the work, a thirst for learning, and a commitment to do the best they can for this beloved United Church of ours and her leaders. I am privileged to be a leader amongst such leaders. Thank you.